How's it going, boys and girls? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to the Eden of Grisaya. So in the last episode, I remember Sakaki and Amane were talking about a few things, but it then transitioned to Sachi and Makina. They, they seem to just ramble on, but I think they just came to uh, accept that they were going to fight no matter what and recapture Yuji. They accepted it. Uh... It took them 15 minutes to do that, but regardless, they accepted that they were going to go out there and fight. Or at least that's what I took away. And uh, that is their oath at twilight, I guess. That's what it was called. I mean, that's what this chapter is called. And it technically is still twilight. We're about to see what Michiru is up to, and I hope that this recording session doesn't have any issues. I, I had major problems last time, but I think everything's okay keyword or key phrase i think so cross your fingers at about the same time this momentous question mark agreement was being reached referring to sachi's and uh makina's lovely conversation which i felt like was just uh a little over the top but whatever matsushima michiru was shut up alone in her room having a discussion of sorts with herself mm. There was no telling how many times she'd muttered these words already. She understood that worrying wasn't going to get her anywhere, but she didn't know what else to do. She didn't even know what to think about. Michiru was well aware she wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Finally. But at times like this, her inability to figure things out quickly was particularly frustrating. And the harder she tried, the heavier her head felt. Her thoughts moved in slow, ponderous circles like passengers on a creaky old ferris wheel. Eventually, the ride ground to a complete halt, and she found herself speaking to the other Michiru within her. Ooh. That's interesting. Oh shit, boy! Damn, dude. I already know about all this, it's just like... Damn, I wasn't expecting it. でも、でも さ、でも頑張ることはできるんじゃない頑張る。そう、頑張る。何をやるにしても、最初から諦めていては駄目だって。君は彼から学んだでしょ。そこで積んでるでしょ。別に彼のためじゃない。彼がいないと悲しい自
And so she did. Well, she'd just gotten yelled at by herself. Yeah, try explaining that. Inner conflict might sound cool, kind of cool, but Michiru knew all too well that she was really just leaning on her other self yet again. She needed someone to pull her along and push her forward, or she'd never do anything at all. That was dependence, plain and simple. She thought this over at length on the day she was buried alive. Back then, after deciding that she wanted to live, she'd crawl up through the dirt. And when she reached out toward Hope, who was it that had grasped her hand? Kazami Yuji, of course! And right now, he was stuck in a deep dark hole of his own. Didn't that mean it was her turn to take him by the hand? If she was ever going to be his equal, she couldn't just rely on others to make her decisions for her. She knew that. She knew that, but... She continues to scream. Everyone wanted to do something, but there wasn't much to be done. Everyone feared that someone else might act rashly, and so they admonished themselves to be careful, even if no one else was. Some had already grown firmly determined, some were still brooding. But most were already looking forward to the moment where things would come to a head, quietly biding their time as they tried to decide what they would do. Oh boy. Oh, Alright. I was worried that my recording software was going to fuck up again as it would uh, transition to the next scene. Because that's what happened last time. It really just locked up. Oh, man. Scary. <clears throat> All too soon, that day arrived. Oh, shit. Is it finally time to move in? I didn't look at the date. I really should have. The final day of Mihama Academy. As of midnight, the school would close or would be closed down. This was the end. Once the day's scheduled lessons were complete, the classroom where they'd spent so much time would be locked and their school would disappear. Yep, it would just vanish. While this had been communicated to them in advance, it still didn't feel quite real. And right, th this is fucking stupid. <laughs> there wasn't much tension in the air at first. But before the afternoon's elective classes, all of Mihama's students were called to their classroom. And as the visiting lecturers who had served as their teachers also filled into the air-conditioned room, the mood finally began to change. What was about to take place here? As they braced themselves, the principal walked to the podium with a mild expression on her face, cleared her throat, and briefly described Mihama's financial issues before restating the, the details of its closure. <laughs> In the suddenly solemn atmosphere of that classroom, the principal's upbeat voice seemed a bit out of place. Nothing she was saying came as any surprise, but her words still had an impact. The school really was shutting down. That fact had lodged itself in the students' hearts like a thorn. I will continue to find it really weird that we have never seen any other instructor or staff member at this institute, uh, and we've only seen the principal who also acts as a teacher, I assume, and there's only six enrolled students. Five if you're counting those who are here right now, but I will continue to find that really weird overall. And a part of me is kind of glad that this really wacky school is getting shut down. Uh, but I guess, whatever. <laughs> it, it, it is what it is of why this school was made. And it's, I, I don't know, I'm just always confused when it comes to this shit. Hmm. So ah, fuck, God damn it. Hmm.そう。あ、fuck, God damn it. Just to clarify, 
Okay, you done? Just to clarify what I was saying earlier, I mean, it's sad that the school is getting shut down, but I was jokingly saying the school is ridiculous. <laughs> and because of that, it's, it, I feel as if it's rightfully getting shut down. But in any other aspect, it's kind of ridiculous uh, in a bad way. So, I mean, it sucks for the students. It's really screwing a lot of things up. Ah, counseling. With her concise speech completed, the principal stepped down from the podium. Without turning around, she walked out of the classroom, followed by the lecturers. Soon enough, only Mihama's five students remained in the room. Nope. After that brief exchange, the classroom fell back into a heavy silence. A discussion between friends was no way to make decisions about the future, but the group hadn't taken the principal's warnings on the point too seriously. But for whatever reason, no one was speaking. Did they already understand each other's intentions? Or had they simply realized that under the circumstances, they had to make their own final decisions? As everyone watched each other, trying to assess the situation, one of the five broke the stalemate. Surprisingly enough, it was Komine Sachi. Quietly getting up from her seat, she strode to the classroom's front door without meeting the gazes of her classmates. After sliding open the door, she turned back and bowed slightly to the room, then left without a word. No one had asked her any questions. No one had tried to stop her. The next to rise from her seat was Matsushima Michiru. There was nothing solemn about her attitude. One might almost have thought she was heading to the bathroom during a recess. Joining her hands behind her head in a forcedly casual manner, she walked to the classroom's rear door. Reaching it, she paused abruptly and breathed in, as if to speak then looked down and studied her slippers for a moment. In the end, she left without saying whatever had been on the tip of her tongue. Most likely, there were countless words swirling around inside Michiru's head, probably not just from her. Knowing how it must have felt to keep all that bottled up inside, no one could bring themselves to call out to her. Next, Suo Amane and Irisu Makina stood up almost simultaneously. The timing appeared to be coincidental, they hadn't exchanged glances. Normally, the two of them were as intimate as sisters, but at the moment, one might almost have thought they were in the middle of a fight. As if to emphasize their disinterest in each other's actions, Amane headed for the front door while Makina walked toward the rear. Like the others, they opened the doors wordlessly, but... God damn it, she's just waiting there. Despite Michiru's admirable efforts to make an impressive exit, it seems she'd gotten paranoid that the others might be making fun of her for it. Instead of walking off down, <coughs> instead of walking off down the hallway, excuse me, she had apparently pressed her ear to the door to listen in, making things slightly awkward when Makina opened it. Still blocking the way, Michiru stared down at the girl in front of her. For her part, Makina gazed right back up at her classmate. This staring contest went on for quite some time. But eventually, Michiru turned around and left, with Makina following in her step in their in her footsteps. Sorry about that. So all that's left is Sakaki. Now alone in the classroom, Yumiko found herself wondering about her departed classmates. Were they actually going off to discuss their futures with the teachers who were waiting in their offices? More importantly, what was she herself going to do? She really ought to know that much, but the answer remained unclear. For some reason, she found herself remembering something she'd overheard once. One afternoon, probably some time ago by now, Yuji had been playing with Makina as usual when he spoke the words in question. Once you decide something's impossible, you'll never get anywhere with it. It wasn't an especially me memorable statement, but for some reason, it had resonated deeply within Yumiko. You can try to pull yourself back together, but once your willpower has failed you, it inevitably gives way again. Eventually, giving up starts to come as a relief. In retrospect, it felt like Yuji was always saying oddly significant things, 
though perhaps her mind was playing tricks on her in his absence. Another memory flashed through Yumiko's mind. Makina had been tugging Yuji's arm frantically, trying to convince him to hurry so they wouldn't miss the start of some television show. But in a composed tone of voice, he told her a commander doesn't run in front of their men. No matter what the circumstances, a commander never gets flustered. They act calmly and carefully. If nothing else, staying composed means you won't be making the people under your command more anxious than they need to be. Sheer willpower can't make the impossible a reality. Still, there was the case of a certain lieutenant who'd boasted bullets can't hit me while standing boldly at the front line of a terrible battle. And when he came through it unscathed, the men who'd witnessed this no longer hesitated to trust him with their lives. After speaking these words thoughtfully to the empty classroom, Yumiko rose slowly from her seat. And then, imitating the students who'd left the classroom with determined strides, she took her own first step toward the future she'd chosen to believe in. Alright. Oh, it's the 31st of July. Wait a minute, I thought we were given, like, months to be able to, like, just chill around. Maybe they still can, it's just classrooms are done. There are classes, and classrooms, and the school building. They're, they're all closed, they're, they're, they're gone. After leaving the school building, Yumiko ultimately returned to her room. Rather than doing anything in particular, she sat around waiting for time to pass. To be more precise, it wasn't that she had nothing to do, but rather that she simply couldn't manage to focus on anything. A part of her was waiting impatiently for the day to end, but at the same time, knowing how little time remained filled her with anxiety. In combination, these conflicting emotions made it difficult to take any specific action. Letting out a sigh that had been sitting heavily at the bottom of her lungs for some time, Yumiko glanced up at the clock on her wall. Somehow, it was nearly 6 in the evening. 6 p.m. was the time limit. After 6, the instructors who were standing by to offer their advice and assistance would pack up and head home. Speaking with them might offer her different paths forward. Once they left, her options would narrow significantly. The power LED on the laptop sitting in front of Yumiko had changed from orange to green. She put off packing her computer until the, la until the very last moment. Closing the machine, she slipped it into her bag and slung it over her shoulder. Staring at the clock, she rose halfway from her seat, then sat back down. This process repeated itself a number of times, but with about 15 minutes remaining, her patience finally ran out. Standing up at last, she looked around the room in which she'd isolated herself for much of her time at Mihama Academy. Her shelves were full of her favorite books. With one glance at any given title, Yumiko could vividly recall the anguish she'd felt at the time she was reading it. The stink of misery and thoroughly had thoroughly ingrained itself into this room. It was, in a sense, a cage which she'd confined herself in. After today, she might never see it again. On the morning of his departure, one well-known adventurer supposedly set fire to his cabin home in order to strengthen his resolve. With a dormitory room, that wasn't exactly a viable option, but Yumiko did believe herself prepared to leave the place behind for good. That's like some Full Metal Alchemist stuff right there, when Ed and Al burned the shit out of their house for one reason or another, but it was their resolve. They couldn't look back, and that's how it is here. I like Full Metal Alchemist, by the way, guys. Still, when she reached out to turn off the lights, she found herself hesitating. It wasn't too late to turn back. Was this really what she wanted to do? Her fingers stiffened, paralyzed by doubt. If she kept running away from this, nothing would ever change. She was at a turning point in her life. A watershed moment. Turning to flee would lead her in exactly nowhere. She knew that all too well. In the form of a long soft sigh, Yumiko pushed her weakness out of her. And with a flick of a finger, she turned off the lights. This room was part of the past now. She had a new path to follow. Stealing herself, she strode out into the hallway, and in that moment, her time in Mihama Academy effectively came to an end. As of now, she was no longer a student. Sakaki Yumiko was her own person. Nothing more, nothing less. It wouldn't inconvenience anyone else if she were to take action. Of course, once she stepped outside the school gates, the extravagant freedom she had enjoyed within the bounds of Mihama's walls would come to an end. But... She was taking that step willingly, in pursuit of true freedom, and to regain something she'd lost. 
her tranquil life inside the this birdcage was over. As Yumiko closed the door to her darkened room, she thought she felt a long stop clock inside her begin to tick once more. So Amane called out to Yumiko. It seemed as if she'd been waiting for this very moment. She was leaning against the hallway wall, with her head hanging forward listlessly. Her bangs obscured the expression on her face, and her arms were folded under her chest as if to emphasize her formidable assets. To be sure, Amane had always been there to help when Yumiko wanted to purchase something too large to carry. But the mini truck they'd used on those occasions didn't belong to either of them. It was the property of the school. Rebellious young people grabbing the keys on the way out. Uh, the door was a tradition of sorts, granted, but a parting gift like that wouldn't go unnoticed. And the last thing they needed was to be tracked down and arrested for theft. So Amane had the option of returning to her family. There was no need for her to participate in a lonely, hopeless struggle just because she felt obliged to do so. With so much pain and violence in her past, who could blame her for choosing a safer and surer path forward? It wasn't like she had to keep fighting the good fight. She could head over to the paymaster to collect the salary she'd earned, along with some canned food and a few blankets, then hitch a ride back home with a passing truck. With her wounded daughter appeared to... Wait, what? When their wounded daughter appeared on their doorstep, her parents would surely be kind and patient. Sooner or later, she'd meet a better man than Kazumi Yuji. Na na na! There is no better man! An ordinary family would suit her fine. In fact, it would probably be the best possible thing for her. After all, she'd been after all she'd been through, excuse me, Suo Amane was the type of person or the sort of person who could appreciate the true value of an ordinary life. でも、普通に生きるって確かに幸せな人生だろうね。でもさ、私、もうそういうの。うんざり。それにね、坂木さん。私は戦いに行くんじゃないよ。私は逃げない女になりたい。ただそれだけ。うん。Fair enough。待つことで事態が好転することもあるのは分かってるけど。でもさ、待ってても無駄かなって時は迷わず行動しないとさ。Well, based on what she's gone through, she makes a valid point. 逃げたところで何も解決なんかしない。何かを見捨てて逃げた結果に得られるのは、どうすることもできない後悔と。他者を恨むことしかできない自分。そしてそんな自分が心底嫌になれば生きているそう。Do as you please then. Yumiko spoke the words somewhat brusquely, whatever, but Amane responded with a cheerful nod. 
and when her friend strode forward, she followed in her footsteps. Elsewhere, as this conversation was taking place, Irisu Makina was seated on top of the school gatepost, kicking her legs back and forth to demonstrate her boredom, while Komune Sachi tidied up the area with a bamboo broom. <laughs> Since her arrival at Mihama Academy, Sachi had cleaned the area around the gate almost every di every single day. In cherry blossom season, and later when the leaves were falling, she had actually swept up twice on a daily basis. Once cherry blossoms have fallen, they've nev they'll never return to their branches. But when the seasons turn, new blossoms will bloom in their place. If we too are blossoms destined to tumble from our branches, then let our final moments at least be beautiful ones. Let us strain against the wind, clinging desperately to life, and when we fall, let some noble observer murmur words of regret at our graceful passing. A life once spent is gone forever, and when you're conscious of this, even an utterly familiar courtyard you've swept countless times can bring tears to your eyes. Swallowing the lump in her throat, Komine Sachi looked down, bit her lip, and spotted in the corner of her eye Yumiko and Amane approaching. As Sachi greeted them with a somewhat forced smile on her face, Yumiko replied with a casual grin of her own. Yumiko's tone was oddly gentle. On her back, she carried a remarkably large bag. Something about the way she held herself suggested a resolve that could no longer be shaken. Abruptly stopping the swinging of her legs, Makina smiled boldly down from her lofty perch, and tilting her head upward, Yumiko met her gaze. Clicking her tongue resentfully, Makina hoisted herself up off the post with both hands and leapt nimbly to the ground. Yumiko stared down at the diminutive young woman now standing in front of her. They couldn't approach this as a joke or some kind of game. It was entirely possible they'd be branded as traitors to their own country. Are you quite sure? In response to Yumiko's unspoken question, Makina met her gaze firmly and, and steadily. They were the eyes of a girl who had nothing to lose. <sighs> Evidently overpowered by Makina's determination, Yumiko let out a small, quiet sigh of defeat. Taking this as her signal, Sachi silently appeared at Makina's side, still holding her bamboo broom. With those brief words, Yumiko turned back once more to look at Mihama Academy which had been her home for so long. It's also a shame that there were only a population of five students, but whatever. Idiots, were they? Well, it was hard to argue with that. But as they considered Yumiko's statement, the word idiot left everyone there thinking of a certain someone. She's probably still deciding whether or not she should. Yeah. I and mean, they are. They're not holding back. Uh, 
廊下の自動販売機の前でペットボトルの口に舌を突っ込んでプコプコしてたよなんか悩んでるみたいだったから声はかけなかったけどなんじゃそりゃ呼んでくる無理に引っ張り出すこともないわそっとしておきなさい何あいついらん子かい,いえ別にそういう意味じゃなくてもう少し待ってみるそうねあと10分6時まで待ってみましょうか6時を過ぎても来なかった場合はどうしますかその時はそれも一つの道それも勇気ある決断と認めて松島さんの選んだ進む先に幸多からんことを祈りましょうチルチル何してんだよ本当に置いてっちゃうぞ Five minutes ago she decided that she was going and now she was reconsidering yet again She'd packed up everything she needed to leave and dashed out her room, but even this late in the game, she couldn't help second-guessing herself. The more important something was, the harder it was for her to decide anything by herself. That was simply Matsushima Michiru's nature. She was afraid of being hurt. She'd think up excuse after excuse, then miss her chance entirely. That was how it had always gone. It was, of course, for this very reason that her other self had come to be. The other girl inside her was nothing more than a shadow, the product of her own weakness. But even knowing that, no, perhaps because she knew that, Michiru continued to doubt herself. You're kind of running out of minutes. Kind of need to hurry up. Oh shit, what the fuck? なんかさ、荷物の整理をしてたらこんなの出てきた。あ、oh, so、let's just set it off before we get going。花火？そう、花火。多分去年の夏の残り。That's right. Back in the common route in the fruit of Grisaya, they went to the beach and lit these、uh, sparklers up. That was a fun time. いつだっけ？海に行った時？そうロケット花火がないことに文句ばっかり言ってた私に少しは静かに遊べってあいつが私にくれたやつはい遊ばずにたんだ God fucking damn it I keep on thinking she I keep on thinking the characters are done talking but then they're not and I just feel bad because I'm skipping うんずっとポケットの中に君ってさ物持ち良すぎっていうか彼がくれたものにまで依存してる石ころとかさ自分でも分かってるよ乙女チックすぎて逆に不気味だよねだから火をつけて燃やしてしまうのけじめってわけでもないけどね意味ないよきっと君は燃えかすになってもそれを大事にしてしまう捨てたり忘れたりすることなんてできないそう思うかけてもいいよ何を命かけようかそれ意味なくないあんたの命って結局私の命でもあるわけだし<笑>多重人格チョーク This multiple personality shit's whack. 面白くないこういう時こそ暗い顔をしないで。笑ってみせるのが君の役目なんじゃないのうん、わかってる。No matter how well you understand what you need to do, sometimes you simply can't convince your body to move. At the end of the day, she was a coward. There's nothing wrong with a little cowardice. Yuji himself had told her that. But at times like this, she genuinely hated herself for, for her tim timidity? Whatever. And because she understood this, the other girl inside her didn't pursue the matter too persistently. There was no point criticizing her for it. They really are, actually.
どこが嫌い綺麗に燃えるのはほんの一瞬燃え終われば黒い燃えかすしか残らない出来の悪い人生みたいで意味もなく寂しくなってくる一人でやるから寂しくなるのよ花火って誰かとやるものよ私は君の一部だし君が生み出した私は誰かには入らない怒ってるだったらこんなところで遊んでる場合じゃないんじゃないの Yeah, maybe you should get going before six o'clock. Shouting at herself wasn't going to change anything. With every minute she spent on her own, the air grew thicker with melancholy. Eventually, the sparkler in Michiru's hand quietly burned itself out. The sight of its charred remains only intensified her loneliness. Michiru wasn't entirely sure herself. What she was feeling right now, staring down at her burned out firework. Only one vague thought came to mind. She wanted to see Yuji. Picking up her bottle, she poured a bit of water onto the smoldering stick. Once it had cooled, she wrapped it carefully in a tissue and then pushed it gently into her pocket, as if stowing away something truly precious.、Yes. Time to get going, I guess. Even after she spent all this time doing really. Nothing productive. Michiru rose up off the ground. Not for the first time today, she found herself burning with determination. She wasn't going to tell herself it was for real this time. People who say that are just trying to convince themselves it's true. Still, there was a giddy energy inside her that hadn't been there before. For now, that was good enough. Bringing her bottle to her mouth, Michiru vigorously gulped down the water remaining within. The clock on the schoolhouse wall indicated that it was 6 p.m. They couldn't wait any longer. It would be unfair to burden their friend with the assumption that she wanted to come with them. And so, there would be no extensions. マキちゃん。でも、でも。諦めなさい。冷たいようだけれど、これもマキちゃんさんの選んだ道なのよ。残る桜もいずれは散る桜だよ、マキちゃん。ふむ、そっか。そうだね。Since their arrival here, many, many things had transpired. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And when they tried to untangle their tangled web of remembrances, nothing but happy and heartwarming memories came to mind. No matter what society at large might think, that was proof enough that Mihama Academy had been a wonderful school. Of only five or six people. <laughs> five or six students, guys. Five or six students. Looking up to the school building, Sachi began to speak in a voice full of emotion. また嬉しい時も楽しい時もこの学園の記憶とともに分かち合い笑いましょうありがとう三浜学園本当にありがとうその感謝の気持ちに深く神戸を垂れ泥の中で背を丸め重波を強く握りしめたのならただひたすらに
What were these graduates thinking of? Did they have regrets? Were there things they'd left undone? It was fair to say they'd done all they could, but even so, there, were, there was perhaps a touch of sadness in their hearts at the prospect of parting from one of the friends they'd made here. However, the time had come to say farewell, until the day they met again. In the red-tinged sunset above them, they thought they could see the face of a certain bottle blonde imbecile. Come to think of it, why had that woman always smelled like grapefruit and- What the fuck?! Farewell- What the hell?! What the- <laughs> What is this- <laughs> What is this narration turned into?! <laughs> At the very last moment, you chose the wiser path. The decision took courage, and we'll never forget it. Well then, let's be on our way. There's a whole new world waiting for us. With firm resolve in their hearts, they turn their backs on, the, on their school to take their first step forward. And in that very moment, a shrill but familiar sound reached their ears. <laughs> Knew it. Hmm. Well then, what manner of language was this? It almost sounded as if someone was shrieking, Hey, wait up, in a remarkably peculiar fashion. Stopping in their tracks, the group turned toward the noise, and found themselves face to face with a vividly blonde creature. The hell is she having her mouth? Were you seriously going to leave me behind was the big idea. The bottle blonde currently emitting odd noises that sounded something like this was unmistakably Matsushima Michiru herself. A plastic bottle was dangling from her face. Her tongue appeared to be stuck tightly within it. What could you even say? Staring at her friend with eyes full of scorn, Makina reached up and yanked forcefully on the bottle in question. <laughs> with an unpleasant little plork, Michiru's tongue popped free from its prison, sending drool flying in all directions. That's lovely. As their dim-witted classmate writhed, writhed, whatever, in agony, holding a hand to her mouth with tears in her eyes, a single thought ran through everyone's heads. Gah, here she is. The dumbass showed up. This was something they should all be celebrating. They understood that, of course. But even so, it was hard not to furrow your brow at such virtuoso display of sheer dumbassery. All eyes turned to Yumiko. Yumi-chan, Ah, come on! うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。う
The woman had in fact been somewhat rude, so Michiru's indignation was at least somewhat understandable. But if Yuji had been around, he'd probably have pointed out that she didn't have much room to criticize anyone else for wearing heavy coats in the middle of summer. Of course, Yuji wasn't here to make that observation. But, as of this moment, their operation to reclaim him had begun in earnest. <laughs> yep, <laughs> she's definitely coming along. She hastened, hastened, whatever, once more to rejoin the group, and soon enough, she tripped over her own shoe and tumbled dramatically to the ground. That, my friends, was Matsushima Michiru in a nutshell. <laughs> well, alrighty. The gang is getting going. Time to rest. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, this is the intro? Oh my god, we've recorded, what, like nine fucking episodes and this is the intro? Oh my god, dude. I thought the intro just didn't exist in this one. I thought it was just like a, oh, this is what happened last time sort of deal. La Eden de la Grasaya. Hell yeah, dude. Definitely have not... I don't even know what to say. We've, well, have we not been experiencing anything in this first part? I guess the prologue was just to get things rolling. So... What could that say about the rest of this, man? Like, what what's about to happen? So we got Sakaki, we have Amane, Michiru. I like that scene, by the way. That was funny. And then Sachi, Makina. Damn, dude. Yeah, it's it's time to get going, man. Like, oh shit, some animation. Damn, dude. Yeah, I, I have no idea what's to come. Oh shit! That's the gang! Oh my god, that was the gang! I hope, I really hope they show up. I really hope we see them, man. I really hope. I'm digging this intro. There's a lot of animation to this. A lot of, uh, anime-esque shit here. I should rewatch that, by the way. Once I'm done with this. Le Eden de la Garcia. Oh shit. What could that have entailed? Alright. Alright! It's time to end the session. Honestly, we've... We've been at it for a while here. Alright. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We're 19%... We're 19% done, and now we get the, the intro. Fuck, whatever. Alright, we are now on I'd Rather Be Fishing. Whatever that means. But as you guys can see, it's like... 31 minutes past midnight. Uh, ni like I said, 19% done. That's that's great. We're we're actually making some progress. I guess you can say that now that we've reached the intro, we're a fifth done with this story. I guess maybe. I don't know. I really hope it does pick up here. Now that you know the gang is you know setting off to go rescue Yuji, I'm sure Yuji is going to get pushed around even more. And man, I really hope we see some more faces. I hope. I hope we see the rest of the team. I really do. That'd be so fucking lit. Of course, we won't see Danny. But I hope we see everyone else. Or at least a few others. Come on. Throw me some Millie, alright? Throw, throw me some Millie. And also a million dollars. That'd be great. Um, And thank you for watching, guys. This was a long episode. But we got the ball rolling. See where this thing goes. Thank you very much for watching this long-ass episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Subscribe for more. Whew, I don't even think we're 10 episodes in. I think this was episode 9. I could be wrong, but whatever. Let us see what happens next. Here in the Eden of Grisaya. See you guys next time.